What's the biggest lesson you took away from all of your years playing poker? And for people listening, you still play poker. So this was something you did professionally at the height, but it's not something that you, you know, stop doing ever. You're continuing to play competitive poker in many ways. So I guess the question is, you know, when you look back on all of the experience you've had playing poker, what's the biggest lesson you've taken away that you've applied in your life time and time and time again? And I know you just gave us a pretty great, juicy one. Is there anything else like that that has just been applicable in your life? And it could be a rule of thumb. It could be a mental model. It could be a, a story, just anything there that applies maybe more broadly. Absolutely. Yeah. So my peak in poker for those listening was around the age of 21 to 23 and I'm 35. So in poker years, I'm, I'm a dinosaur. Um, I, I'm basically halfway into the grave, but I still find ways to outcompete and to win. Uh, I usually refer to myself as semi-retired. Uh, I'm currently in the middle of a um, planned sabbatical due to the summer months and just to take a break to travel, you know, gallivant around Europe a little bit. I'm currently in Mexico, really going deep into my work with executives and investors. And, you know, these days I when I play, I play primarily for fun with people that I really enjoy, but obviously I'm still trying to win. And if I could take home some money, that's that's even better. One of the key lessons that I apply over and over again from my days in poker, I would distill down by saying, like, are you playing the right game? So in poker, we would call this game selection is this is by far the biggest lever that you have in how much that you win. Because in poker, and I think in a lot of aspects in life, success is relativistic. So think about this literally, if you are a little league baseball player, but you find yourself in a t-ball league, you'll probably be the MVP. Doesn't mean you're an amazing baseball player, but you imagine to get in games that you are likely the best player. And the same is very much true in poker, is a lot of the soft skills of poker revolve around how do you get into games with players who aren't as good as you. If you want to get better, Obviously, that's going. a lot of that's going to come from competing against and learning from players who are at your level or higher. And a lot of that is unavoidable, is where there are bad players, other good players will come. It's very much field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. But knowing where is my source of advantage and how can I find ways to lever that advantage? Where are the places that I play best? How can I play in those places more often? And you extend this to entrepreneurship and, all right, what am I really good at? What do I think is a really great opportunity? What is the intersection of that in terms of the field that I want to play in to maximize my chances of success? Think about this as an investor. What is the sector that I know the most, that I have the most asymmetric information, that I have the most interest in and willing to just go extremely deep into the crevices, into the balance sheets in order to uncover this information that I have a sustainable moat, a sustainable competitive advantage in this place. So that's really what I distill it down to is where do you play? What game do you want to play? And I said, as I said at the outset, recognizing all the times that you are playing games without even realizing it. So the way I like to summarize it is every time that you play in a game, you don't have an advantage in, you dilute your advantage. So if I can only play in games that I win, on average, I don't need to worry about the scoreboard. I don't need to worry about how much my bank account, that'll take care of itself. All I need to convert for is that I'm putting myself in a position to succeed. And that's the same thing in my business is picking something that I would literally do all day for free, but I happen to have some people who find it very valuable, who allow me to live a decent standard of living. And so that's what I'm trying to instill with clients is, all right, rather than worrying about the things that you aren't good at, how do you go deep around the things that you are really good at? What are the things that for you are pretty pedestrian that to others look like you're running up a wall? How can you do more of those activities? So th this concept of game selection, I find is really, really key.